It seems like everybody and their brother is attacking NVIDIA and its gigantic margins lately. The latest to join the fray is Amazon. Now we're gonna get into it real quick, but first I need to welcome you to Ruben Tech, the only channel on all of YouTube that meets at the intersection of tech, politics, and finance. Please subscribe and like down below. Amazon announced last week is Trainium 3 Ultra servers are now available, enabling customers to train and deploy AI models faster at lower cost. Oh, sounds great. Ruben, is this what you want to tell us? No, it isn't. These servers have been available within Amazon's cloud to Amazon for the past year, and now they're just being made available to the public. It is big news, but was even bigger and more of a threat to Nvidia is actually down here, where they're talking about next generation Tranium 4. Now the first paragraph they're going ahead and they're looking at performance, but let's go ahead and examine the second paragraph in a little bit more detail. It states, to deliver even greater scale up performance, Trainium 4 is being designed to support NVIDIA's NVLink Fusion, high speed chip interconnect technology. This integration will enable Trainium 4, Graviton, and Elastic Fabric Adapter to work together seamlessly within common MGX racks, providing you with a cost-effective rack-scale AI infrastructure that supports both GPU and Trainium servers. The result is a flexible, high-performance platform optimized for demanding AI model training and inference work. Now, just in case you're saying to yourself, I have no idea what you just said, let me go ahead and explain. The Trainium 4 announcement is basically AWS saying, fine Nvidia, your cables have won. But the big deal here is that AWS is adopting Nvidia's NVLink interconnects. What this means is this allows AWS to slot cheaper Amazon chips into the exact same supercomputers that contain Nvidia's GPUs. It's a pitch for a mixed hardware solution. Buy the expensive NVIDIA chips where you need them and fill the rest of the rack with Tranium to save on costs. Now just remember, to be crystal clear, this solves hardware compatibility. Absolutely a big deal, but it still doesn't deal with software. If you're married to CUDA, you still can't touch these chips. That said guys, I wanna to touch again on Microsoft's solution to CUDA because I even had an NVIDIA or at least an alleged NVIDIA employee come into my comments and try to blow this off like it wasn't a big deal. It absolutely is. I wanna be crystal clear what's going on here. Microsoft, what is rumored to be in development over there, is not like Zluda. It's not the idea of write, write once, run anywhere. This is something completely different. What Microsoft is saying, what they're acknowledging, is that yes, CUDA may have won over all of your hearts, but you can all keep developing in CUDA, what we're creating is a drop-in environment. You just keep using all your tools that you've been using forever. You can stay comfortable, but at the end, we will do all the heavy lifting to ensure that it runs on AMD's GPUs. Now you might say, why is this such a big deal? Because developers fall in love with their environments. When I was a mobile dev, I worked with an iOS developer who was absolutely fantastic. However, he would not do anything, and I wanna repeat, anything outside of Xcode. He had been building Apple apps since I believe the beginning. And he, I mean, he, he was just phenomenal. I can't even, like, when I talk about him right now, I have, you know, I, I don't wanna gloss over the guy, but he was absolutely phenomenal. But he would not leave Xcode. There was one time where we talked about bringing in some cross compatibility with Flutter to help save on time. And he was like, absolutely, Ruben, it's your call if you wanna do such, but I will never interact with those modules. You guys have to maintain them. And to me, it was like, why, why not? It's this tooling over here, it's really simple. And he's like, no, I'm not leaving my environment. And that is what this solves. For him, what it would be like is saying, hey, you can develop an Android app and never have to leave Xcode. You can use all of the tools that you're so used to, that you're so familiar with, and that you're so good at. And in the end, will run perfectly on Android. You don't have to do a single thing. And this is what Google actually did with Java. So if you're an Android developer, you would go ahead and you would download a Java IDE. You would download the JDK, the JRE, you download Maven and Gradle. 
all these different Java tools. And then when you produce your, your app, it actually ran and produced Dalvik file, files. That's what Google did. They created a drop-in. And this is what Microsoft is looking at. And this is why it would be such a threat to NVIDIA. And so next in our recap of threats against NVIDIA, let's talk about Ironwood. But specifically, let's actually go into the Google's TPU advantage and cost. And we're gonna use OpenAI. So on this channel, I've been talking about the NVIDIA attacks, i.e. when OpenAI or anybody else has to go and pay and give Jensen 70% margins, right? How does that affect their costs of running their AIs? And we can see the following that industry analysts suggest that Google may be attaining its AI compute power at roughly 20% of the costs incurred by those purchasing high-end NVIDIA GPUs, applying a four to six X cost efficiency advantage per unit of compute at the hardware level. <laughs> right, is that what people do? I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. And so finally, if I'm going to recap all the threats against NVIDIA, I would be, it would be shameful if I left out the biggest threat to NVIDIA in the biggest AI market in the world. And that, of course, is Huawei. And first of all, I want to show you this, the Huawei Ascend AI Accelerator SuperPod Roadmap. This is actually going over the accelerator part of it first, and then we'll cover the SuperPod. But I want to note to you that by 2028, they are looking at having the Ascend 970. It's four petaflops of FP8 performance, eight petaflops of FP4 performance. If you are familiar with NVIDIA's Blackwell chip, you might say, well, that's not as good as Blackwell is right now. And that's three years later. And that is correct. When it comes to chip by chip performance, Huawei has set out an aggressive goal to be equal to NVIDIA by 2030. But the big deal here is the interconnect four terabytes a second of interconnect. And that's such a big deal because that's 2X what NVIDIA has right now in Blackwell, and it leads us to this. Huawei plans on catching up and surpassing NVIDIA on a systems level important. They're saying, hey, we might not be up to par with you on a chip for quite some time here, five, six, seven years, but on a systems level, we can surpass you. And that is where this comes in. We can see the Atlas 950 SuperPod, 8,192 Ascend EPUs planned for September of 2026 to be followed up with the Atlas 960 SuperPod, 15,488 Ascend EPUs. Okay, this is absolutely staggering numbers. This is gonna scale up to uh, 500,000 plus Ascend EPUs by uh, 2027 and then of course in 2028 they plan on having the atlas 960 supercluster with 1 million plus ascend mpus now immediately i can hear some of you naysayers out there saying how is this possible for huawei to do that it's going to consume so much energy but then i bring you to my personal development i will leave a link to this down below of the kardashev scale of world economies that's right i'm taking the kardashev scale that's applied to aliens and galactic civilizations and i'm applying it to those on earth and we can see that china actually has the highest status for a civilization on earth and that's because they produce the most energy by far at 10 thousand terawatt hours a year that is 2.25 times what america is america comes in at 4400 terawatt hours a year mind you that china last year brought on 330 terawatt hours of electricity over the previous year okay that's not total that's just over the previous year and america in total over its previous year from all sources only added 110 terawatt hours over its previous year, which is, I mean, just from solar, they are three acts where we are in energy. And as we heard from NVIDIA's Jensen Wong, they have planned deployment of nine times our electricity output 
nine times. So now if you're an NVIDIA investor, I don't want you to get upset with me and think that I'm attacking you. The simple fact is, is that nobody can maintain 70% margins forever. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Every single company on earth is looking at those margins and they're looking to get their own piece of them. And it's going to happen. It doesn't mean that NVIDIA is gonna go away. It just means that they're gonna have to compete a lot harder. They're gonna have to make sure that they keep churning out good products but more likely than not, they're going to have to sell more product at lower margins. It's just inevitable. Let me know what you think about this down below. If you agree, disagree, please put it in the comments. As you guys know who are down there, I answer everything. All of you out there, have a great day. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Thank you.